Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time it's going to be an updated Dragoon D deck profile for Master Rule 5, April 1st, 2020 Forbidden and Limited list. No Steam, no Instant Fusion, no Distrudo, uh, but actually we've just found out that those cards are basically unnecessary with the most recent combo video that I put up, uh, which is why we're here, because I said if that video got a certain number of likes, I would put this deck profile up in a timely manner, and that like goal got smashed. So, here we are showing you this deck list now if you're interested this deck list is something that i consider to be not even on the rogue spectrum it's definitely a casual deck but you could occasionally bully some people at locals with this deck um it's just one of those things where it's just unfortunately like dragoonie's time is come and gone if you're trying to play this deck in a competitive environment you're gonna have a very hard time <laughs> it's why i don't play it i love this card pool and i love this deck so much in terms of how it's played and i love messing with these cards but i could literally never find myself playing this in any sort of competitive event because like I would basically just be throwing away my experience that's basically my gist of this deck but this deck is built the best way I could think to make it as streamlined and consistent as possible and I've been having very good testing results with it in terms of the variety of hands that are playable but anyway before I show you this deck list if you're new here and want to see more Yu-Gi-Oh content and like what you see and want to see more then consider subscribing and enabling that little bell notification icon so that you see my videos in your subscription feed because YouTube apparently doesn't want to show people those things unless they enable notifications. I would love to welcome you to the channel. I'd love to show you more stuff. I'd love to uh, to just do stuff, do Yu-Gi-Oh! related things. But if you are also someone that just likes this video, make sure to leave a like on the video before you leave. It helps a lot in terms of engagement rates more than you could ever understand and if you have any questions comments or concerns then definitely leave a comment down below other than that if you don't know i stream multiple times a week three minimum usually playing Yu-Gi-Oh, and just chatting with you know people talking about Yu-Gi-Oh, trying to make decks better playing various decks and stuff like that over on twitch link to that is in the description of every video i put on the channel and if you're watching this video in the first couple hours that it went live chances are i am live streaming right now so if you're interested Head on over to the Twitch page, see if I'm streaming. If I'm not streaming, still follow that and enable notifications there so you don't miss the next time I go live, which is usually on Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays because I play a lot of different stuff. And with Master Rule 5 here, I'm going to be doing a lot of streams, doing rank grinding on Dueling Book, trying to play as many decks as possible and make them as good as possible and get as good as possible as I can with each of those decks because I'm really excited to play Yu-Gi-Oh! right now, even though there's no events. But anyway, this deck is a 40-card deck list. Well, 39 if you count Upstart. And it starts with three copies of Dragoonity Sinidus. This card is just strictly better than Ducks because it's a card that starts plays by itself without Dragon Ravine or without needing a Tuner Engrave. I would love to be able to play Ducks because Ducks has a better value system built around it, which is what the original Dragoonity deck was designed to play under. Uh, but unfortunately, like it's just too inconsistent with the as few copies of Ravine as we have in the format. And the fact that when we're going first, we're only drawing five cards where Dragoonity was designed in the game's era when we were drawing six when we went first. It's just Ducks is unreliable. Even though Ducks doesn't restrict you to what you can summon from your extra deck, Sinidus locks you to Dragons, which makes it, you know, a little bit harder for us. Uh, but it's inherently a starter on its own that doesn't require Dragon Ravine. So it's just better to play. One copy of Blackwing Zephyros the Elite. You want to access this card mid-combo. You don't really want to open with it, although if you open with it, it is fine, as long as the rest of your hand is a playable combo hand. Um, you just don't want to use this effect before you get to the point in the combo that it's useful, or else it sort of affects the combo negatively, which is why we're not playing multiples. Same sort of thing with Ducks. The deck isn't really built to facilitate those kind of interactions anymore, because the game really doesn't support it. But anyway... If I could stop dropping cards on my shirt, that'd be nice. Three copies of Garuda the Wind Spirit. Now, this is a fantastic extender because it works with so many cards in the deck like to make it better than what it normally could be. Under normal circumstances, it's just a generic level 4 monster that summons itself. You can send it as plus tuner into a synchro, banish the Senatus for Garuda, summon this, make a Gatorig with it after you got your tuner back off of Luin or Vajrayana. But when it's in its moments that where it shines, it's being used to banish Tempest and get a plus, which is nice, meaning it's like definitely one of the better extenders in the deck. Definitely a three of worthy, even before Mistleton, but we are playing three Mistleton as well because it's one of those cards that when your hands are working normally, it's a fantastic extender. It does everything that any other extender could do. But when your hands are subpar, this card does things that other extenders couldn't. Like, if your hand is a hand of like Tuner plus two Mistletons and a Garuda, if this Mistleton was like any other extender, it probably wouldn't be able to play. Whereas 
if your hand is like tuner double missile ten and a card like garuda or dragon shrine uh then you're able to make a ton with your two missile tens and then make uh, a synchro off of your dragon shrine for dark worm or you're able to make Gaydurg off of your Garuda banishing a missile tin after you detached it off of Tum. Uh, and you still have the tuner left on the board. So it like makes you have a way into full combo. So like it's actually like it's good in the hands that are worse. But if it's a normally functioning hand of Synodus, Tuner plus Extender, this is just as good as every other extender. Uh, it's better nor it's neither better nor worse than any other extender you could play, but it shines in the hands that are kind of weird and wonky which is why we're playing three of it, as well as the fact that it's searchable off Tempest, Dragon Ruler of Storms as an extender. This is actually an extender you could draw as well. Uh, funnily enough, I'm surprised Konami hasn't put this card back to like two or three, noticing that it hasn't done anything in the format since they unbanned it. I think they're just a little bit too scared of this card and Dragon Rulers in general, but Dragon Rulers do not work unless multiple of them are legal at the same time. And Tempest is the only one legal, and the only thing Tempest is good for is supporting wind decks, and the wind decks are not that good. Like, the wind decks in the format that are printed in the card pool are not that impressive. So, like, Tempest doesn't even really boost them that much, because if it did, then we'd be seeing wind decks doing well. Um, and it doesn't really boost dragon decks that generically either, because cards that it would be abused with are banned now, like Eclipse Wyvern and stuff like that. So, I feel like Konami could put this card back to two or three, and that would make this deck get a huge boost. Still wouldn't be, like, super good in terms of competitively, it would, but it would just be, increase its consistency. But this card is a fantastic extender, because you can Gold Sark this, you can Dragon Shrine this and banish it for uh, uh, Garuda, or you can just draw this. You can open Synodus, Tune, or Tempest, and you make Gaiderg, you add Garuda, discard Tempest, banish it, and then search Mistleton, and then you just go from there. You just full combo. So, like, I would like to play more of it, but unfortunately it's at one. Sad face, Konami. The card's done nothing. You could do some things with it. You could spice up your Forbidden Limited list if you want to, and not really sacrifice anything in the format. One copy of Red Eyes Darkness Spell Dragon. This card is uh, is a given. Even in its eroded form, we would still play it. The combo I posted on the channel works with a Red Med in its eroded form accidentally, <laughs> just with a minor change. So we don't even need to play Leviton in this deck, and Leviton is a brick, and it's not even that good. But Red Med is fantastic. And I am going to try to enjoy it as long as I can until we get that errata in the TCG. But we don't have it yet, so we have some hope. Anyway, three copies of Dragoonity Phalanx uh, for tuner number one and two copies of Dragoonity Coos for tuner number two. Now, I was noticing my bad hands were hands that were clumped with a lot of tuners, like multiple copies of Coos and Phalanx, uh, because they don't really do anything when you have multiple tuners in your hand. So I cut the third Coos because Coos is by far the least important tuner now since we're not summoning Barca as our first action. Uh, Coos is the least important tuner of the two because Phalanx is good for facilitating your ending plays because it lets you go into Crystal Wing and it lets you go into Borlode Savage, which Coos does not. Uh, as well as um, uh, it's just a better overall card because of that. Uh, it has no restrictions on it whatsoever where Coos has a few. Um, and like Coos is needed to make the Barca mid-combo, but other than that, like you could get away with like just not using Coos in the combo at any point until you make Barca. Uh, so it's one of those things where I was playing three of it and I was noticing my hands were getting very clumpy and very odd and I'd cut the Coos for Upstart Goblin to make the deck more consistent across the board with other cards and it improved a lot. So you could play the third Coos, but believe you me, I've noticed all the times that Upstart has mattered in terms of deck consistency and it's mattered a fair amount. So you could just take my word for it or you could play the third Coos and find out for yourself instead of Upstart. Anyway, one copy of Miss Valley Baby Rock. This card is just a generic, like, combo piece. It's necessary for the ending stage of the combo. Same thing as Zephyros. It's not something you want to use early in the combo. It's something you really want to use for its role in the combo. And if you change that, then it gets kind of weird. Uh, but if you draw it, it's fine. Your hand just has to be able to combo around it. And then it's just a card that you can search an extender and discard this. You can search Garuda, discard Baby Rock, uh, and then that's fine. But... Other cards that we play, two copies of uh, Supreme King Dragon Dark Worm and one copy of Supreme King Gate Zero. Apparently I don't own this card even though I bought four boxes of Maximum Crisis back in 2017 and I'm positive I had like 17 or 18 of these at one point. Um, apparently I don't have one now. I've looked through all my bulk, I've looked through my entire collection, cannot find one and I can't go to a locals to buy one because we're currently going through a bit of a situation. So unfortunately this has to be a backwards card for now, but Supreme King K0 is the better one to play over Infinity, although you could play Infinity just if you're using it as free discard fodder. Sometimes scaling this comes up because this is a zero scale and your Lechery and your Dark Worm and your Goliath are both are all scale fives. So this is the only low scale. So sometimes you do 
end up in situations where it's beneficial to like pendulum summon like a couple of tuners out of your hand <laughs> or pendulum summon a duplicate senatus uh, so that you can have an extender. Um, very odd, but sometimes it comes up, right? It's one of those things. It's, it's weird, but sometimes it happens. And when it happens, it's hilarious that it could even be something that we're doing in the deck. So mainly you're using these for Dark Worm or for uh, Dragon Shrine or discarding it off Dragon Ravine um, to get, you know, a free extender on the board and then get a free card to either discard for Ravine or just a card in your hand. Just, it just, it's just free cards. Uh, I don't even think we'd be playing Destrudo in this deck if it was still illegal because it doesn't hit the right numbers. But Dark Worm hits the right numbers because Lumen exists, which is why it's like really good. Uh, but last two monsters in the main deck, Goliath Lechery. The entire purpose of this deck is to summon Goliath with its uh, full attack off of LP in the last stage of the combo. And then scale your Lechery that you searched off Gaederg. Your opponent can't activate spells or spell effects. Neither of you can activate spell or spell effects or summon from the extra deck, but that's fine because your board is built and you have multiple negates to try and keep them from breaking these so that they could play the game. Uh, that's the entire purpose of this deck, which is why that we're playing them. Uh, it's strictly better than the Buster Whelp on Leviton play, simply because that doesn't negate any spells, and this has a bigger stat line, which does matter. It's a, a very like relevant increase, going from 2600 to 2750. There is significantly less cards in the game that can out this in terms of like compared to cards that could just attack over your Leviton and turn off your uh, domain lock on them. But anyway, that was 23 monsters. The rest of the deck, 17 spells, three copies of Dragon Ravine because you have to play them. The cards that search ravine, uh, terraforming, and set rotation, and just any field spell of your choice for set rotation. This could be like Mystic Mine if you want to just be fucking silly. Uh, it doesn't matter what you give them, even if it is like Oracle Zephyr or Gateway to Chaos or whatever, because they can't activate it if your deck worked, because you have Lechery face up, so they can't activate spells anyway. Uh, so it really doesn't matter. I'm just playing Oracle of Zephyr because on the off chance that I don't get to Lechery, then if they're playing a field spell deck, they can't activate Oracle of Zephyr and they can't activate their field spell because of set rotation, preventing them from activating a field spell over the one that was set, right? But continuing on, two copies of Dragoonie Divine Lance. This card is a little bit better positioned now that we're in Master Rule 5. Uh, you can actually you know, play more of it because if you play one of it, it is a brick. If you draw it and have to discard it off Ravine or something to make the rest of your hand live, um, then your combo was kind of scuffed. But now you're in an instance where if you draw it, you could you know do something with it, like discard it for Senatus or discard it for Ravine, and then search the other one off Romulus. And then if you are forced to play this as an extender to your combo, it isn't the worst. So it just makes sense to play two of it now, simply because it means that your hands in your deck are of a better variety uh, and better playability across that variety. But two copies of Dragon Shrine, one copy of Foolish. These are just... These read just send uh, Tempest or Dark Worm from deck to grave. Nothing special. <laughs> like, honestly. Um, you just either send Tempest or send Dark Worm, depending on what your hand uh, facilitates. Uh, and you play accordingly. Gold Sark, banish Tempest from deck. Search a, a dragon, like Mistleton or, dark, uh, Mistleton or uh, a Tuner. Not Dark Worm. Dark Worm is not a wind. Uh, Monster Reborn, this is a fantastic extender now because we get to step up into Synchros, into our Atom play. Uh, whereas before it was kind of mediocre, but now this is a fantastic high quality extender because this could just Monster Reborn your Sinidus after you make a Vajrayana with it. And you got the tuner back, you Monster Reborn Sinidus, make Gator, that goes into your Atom play. And then the Upstart Goblin. Uh, this makes the deck more consistent across the board, uh, which is what you want. Uh, you could play Into the Void if you want, but I'm not sure what card you would cut for that. Um, truth be told. Uh, it just, it's like, we're already like at sort of like the perfect fit 39 cards. Uh, because I don't know what you would cut for. You could probably cut a Divine Lance, but that card's justifiable. You could probably cut a Mistleton, but that card's justifiable, right? As, you know, playing multiple copies of it. If you're cutting, if you're cutting combo enablers in order to play cards that increase your consistency across the board, you're hurting your deck's ability to do something to increase its ability to do the exact same thing, but in a more generic sense. But sometimes that's worse. Really depends. But anyway, last three cards in the deck, Call by the Grave. Pretty clear. You don't want to get hand trapped. Uh, you could lose to a light sneeze from across the room because this deck is so fragile. If your normal summon gets stopped, you lose. Oof. Anyway, extra deck. One copy of Romulus, one copy of Heretic Seal Heavenly Spheres. This isn't used for a combo anymore, but sometimes you end on it in weird hands where you just have like extra resources to do something with, or you know something has gone like wrong. Sometimes you're able to end on this uh, if you couldn't get to a lechery play based off the construction of your hand. Guard Dragon LP, Guard Dragon Pisty. Uh, these are essential combo pieces. 
Triple Burst Dragon, this is an essential combo piece with Pisty because it gets you the arrow pointing for Pisty. Uh, and it's also just a really good equip on Borderlord Savage uh, because it's strictly better than Romulus to equip to it because it's one extra negate and a bigger attack boost. So you're just Gold Dread. This card doesn't come up nearly as often as I would like it to, but occasionally, same thing with Hieratic Seal of Heavenly Spheres. There's weird hands where this is relevant. Uh, they're very few and far between, but they have come up enough times for me to warrant this still being in the deck, overcutting it for something like another Synchro or another just weird one-off link that is like very utilitary based or like something like Titanic Galaxy, which never gets made because it physically can't be made in this deck because um, we never have two eights uh, that we want to overlay with. Uh, but Saryuja comes up occasionally, but you're almost never using it for the draw four effect because if you could use the draw four effect and that meant you had enough resources to combo normally anyway, it's usually being used for like specialing Goliath out of your hand or something like that, something weird. Uh, based off whatever your hand structure was. And then Darkness Metal, the Dragon of Dark Steel. This card is a key combo piece. Uh, definitely play it if you're in the territory that you could play that card in. But for Xyz Monsters, just one. Hyrat Dragon King of Atum. I wanted to play two of this. Uh, it came up a couple times in testing, but not nearly enough to justify the slot um, over the thing like Star Yuja. You just make this once and just summon Red Med, and then that's fine. Um, I'm just really glad we get to make that card as our starting play again because it feels like this deck is actually back to its roots But then it's also boosted because we do have the like quality links like LP and Pisty that we can go into For synchros one Gatorg, one Vajrayana, one Lewin because this card is insane and then Barka because this card is also insane um, Lewin just makes uh, your Dark Worm into a fantastic extender to go into your play uh, because you can synchro with a Dragoonie tuner in Dark Worm into this, and it's effectively a Vajrayana, but it's a synchro tuner, so it's strictly a little bit worse, which is why the Vajrayana is here, because sometimes the Vajrayana is needed for certain aspects of combo play, or follow-up, because you could like, step up into Vajrayana with Sinidus and a tuner, equip a Coos, and then go into Ascalon, where you can't do that with Luin because it's synchro tuner, so you can't synchro with a synchro tuner and a tuner into Ascalon, which is why, uh, like, that's in the extra deck. But... Last three synchros are big, powerful boys. Crystal Wing, Borload Savage Dragon, and Dragoonity Knight, Ascalon. Ascalon is kind of a beast of a card. It's not really a good turn one card, but it's a good turn two card. Uh, because it just can out an entire board of monsters by itself with the way this deck is structured. And these are our two big boys to end on. The Days of Stardust Dragon have long since come and gone, which is unfortunate. But this is just what we're dealing with. Uh, we're just trying to end on these two cards every turn one possible. And that's sort of just where we are putting things. But... That is it for this deck profile. If you liked what you saw, or if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop a like on the video and leave a comment down below. And like I said, if you're new here, consider subscribing. I'd love to welcome you on board. Um, and again, Twitch page. I stream multiple times a week. I might be streaming now, depending on when you watch this video. Come on by. Come follow the page or come see the stream. I'd love to have you around for some Yu-Gi-Oh! related antics. But other than that, that's basically it. This uh, this deck is uh, very fun for me. I like playing with this card pool. Um, it's, this is the deck that hard like hooked me into Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, even though I've been playing the game for a number of years by the time this archetype came out, uh, like this is what really sunk its teeth into me and got me really, really hooked on Yu-Gi-Oh. And it's also what inspired me to start doing content creation, which is why I'm sitting in front of you today. So this is definitely the roots of my existence as a Yu-Gi-Oh player. And I always like messing with it. I just hate how unfortunately bad the deck is on a competitive level. But anyway, that is the deck profile. If you enjoyed it and you like it, let me know down below in the comments or with that little like button. But otherwise, that is where I'm gonna leave you today. As always guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are. Like I've already said, thanks for your time as usual and take care. I will see you in the next video.